We all know the importance of making sure your mountain bike is in good working order. A bit of basic maintenance, cleaning it, lubing it, making sure your gears are working, things like that. But there's also a whole bunch of hidden sins out there. Things that people forget, people uh, ignore, people sweep under the carpet. I'm grinning because I know there's a bunch of things I'm guilty of. So let's have a look at some of them, shall we? Now the headset is definitely one of those out of sight, out of mind parts of the bike, yeah? Well, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, all that sort of stuff. Well, the headset, the poor thing, think how much it suffers. On every single ride, you're loading up the whole time. And if you ride in dirty conditions, every time you wash it, you sacrifice ruining those bearings bit by bit. Now, when was the last time that you actually took your stem off, slid the fork out, and had a good look at the headset and put some fresh grease in there? Yeah, well, I'm very guilty of this as well. I ride in filthy conditions a lot of the time. And sometimes, if I'm completely honest, I'm too busy just trying to get in and warm. So I get the bike washed, I'll get some bike spray on it, make sure it's got corrosion inhibitor on there. And then pretty much I'll be moving on to the next thing, like getting clean. So what you want to be doing though, is not following my example there. And actually from time to time, removing the stem of your bike and starting to have a little look at the headset. Now, if your bearings are knackered at this point, yes, by all means, you should be replacing them. If they just feel, um, you know, feel like they could do with a bit more grease, then by all means, pick up the cover on them, the little plastic cover, and inspect them, have a look at them. If they look absolutely filthy, it may be worth cleaning them and putting some fresh grease in. And at the very least, remove them, clean the cups or clean the frame, depending on how your headset system works. The same goes on, on the underside, on the fork side. Clean all those surfaces, put some fresh grease, seat the bearings back in place again, and put a load of grease over the top. Give them a good lick of grease on both sides. Now, this isn't for any lubrication. You've got to treat grease as a barrier against water. If you can prevent water getting in there in the first place, then it's going to do part of this job for you, and it won't be that often that you're going to need to do this. But definitely give your headset some love. I know that I'm pretty hard on headsets, just looking behind me at the status of some of my bikes here. So, this is well overdue for me, and it might be for you too. Have you ever gone to inflate your tires or perhaps drop a bit of pressure when you've been out on a trail and notice that either it's really hard to get the air in the valve, like it feels like maybe there's some resistance with the pump or the opposite if you're trying to depress the valve and release some air. And it's just kind of, it's not hissing out as it should be. It's kind of just a bit of a and barely coming out. Almost as if your valves are clogged. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? It probably is because your valves are clogged. Now, this can happen for a variety of reasons. The most common option here is the fact that you're running tubeless and some tire sealant has managed to find its way in there. This can happen for various reasons. It could be for releasing air, and you've done it at part of the cycle of the wheel there where some sealant has gone down the valve for that process. And essentially, the sealant is just doing its job. I can't really blame it for this. It's tried to seal up the valve. Now, this is why you need a valve core removal tool. Now, you can buy these as separate tools. You sometimes get them with valves as the valve cap. Whatever option you have, they are definitely worth having, whether you have tubeless or not, because at some point you'll need to replace one of these valve cores. And it's a bit of a nightmare if you're trying to do this with a set of pliers. Now, you want to be removing the valve core from the actual valve and simply cleaning it. Now, there's a few ways of doing it. You'll be able to see if it's got loads of uh, gunked up rubber and stuff on it. If it has, get to work with a fine pick or even just your hands and start removing the stuff. But if it's a little bit more stubborn and it's not coming off, then you probably want to look at something a bit more specific like this. This is a glue and sealant remover. Uh, essentially, it's designed to sort of melt this stuff down. So to use that, all you want to do is literally spray a load on, uh, leave the valve in place basically just to sort of, I don't know, go make a cup of tea come back in 10 minutes, leave it to agitate basically and do its thing. And you'll find the rubber does break down that bit better and does come off easier. Uh, that stuff is actually designed for taking off the glue and sealant off the inside of your tires, but it works really well on valve cores when they suffer like this. Now, I don't know how you put tubeless sealant into your tires, but I actually like putting it in through the valve. So I know that my valves are susceptible for this from time to time. And it is a process I do have to sort of repeat. Because of that, I do tend to keep some spare valve cores, which you can get from old inner tubes or old knackered valves. Keep the valve cores. 
because sooner or later you'll be out on a ride and this will happen to you and it'll be really frustrating uh, so you can just change the valve core or it might happen just before a ride and you can't get the air in that you really need to so swap it out and jobs are good one. Now whilst we're at it, let's talk about topping up tyre sealant. If you're running a tubeless setup, chances are here and there it's going to dry up without you noticing it, which means you'll either get be more susceptible to getting punctures or perhaps you've got a slow puncture. So have you noticed that your perhaps your rear tyre pressure has been a little lower than you think it should do at the start of a ride? Well that might be because you need a bit more sealant on the inside of your tyre. Air can still manage to find its way out. Now there's no real sort of method to find out how long the stuff's going to last. Depends on what brand stuff you use, how much of it you use, the tyre combination, you're using it in the temperature you're riding in. It all makes a big difference. Extremes of temperature, hot and cold, definitely make a difference to the duration of how long this stuff lasts when you've got it inside your tyres. And the only real sure-fired way to know is by checking on the inside. But you can get a good indication by getting your wheel and giving it a bit of a slosh around. All right, on this one, I can still hear, basically I can hear sealant running around on the inside. So I do know that it's got some fresh sealant in there and it's good to go. But if it's not doing that, then really it's probably time for a sealant top up on there. Now as sealant dries, uh, you'll find you get a skin on the inside of the tire. Now if you're just topping up sealant, leave it in there. This actually works quite well. But if you're going fresh, then really you want to start fresh, get it all out, clean up the inside there, clean up the rim bed, make sure your valve cores are all nice and clean and put some fresh stuff in. Now you will notice, again, depending on the brand of tire sealant you use, you get these things called tire bogies or sealant bogies. Because of the fact they have like a latex rubber or forms of rubber that's designed to sort of congeal, kind of like your blood does when it scabs, you'll find you get these giant scabs floating around sometimes. Um, Look online, look up Stan's tyre bogies, uh, that's a common option that does it. But um, essentially if it's done that, it's not going to be filling up any holes as you get them. So replacing fresh sealant is the best thing to do. Now you will notice a bit of a pattern of how often you need to do it depending on where you ride. Again, my method is to give it a shake. If it's not doing, I actually like to inject some fresh sealant through the valve. It's the least messy way of doing it. But as I made a comment on my previous bit in the video, it will, after a while, make your valves get a bit congealed. But it's the price, price I'm prepared to pay because I can get some sealant in super fast. I don't have to reseat the tire and it works absolutely fine for me. And I'm happy to clean valve cores here and there. But you might, might not want to do that. You might actually prefer the option of just opening half the tire, inspecting the inside, which is a good thing to do, and replacing as needed. But uh, don't leave it until your tire goes down flat halfway through the ride and you find out it's completely dry on the inside one of those bogies floating around. Keep on top of this stuff, don't ignore it. When was the last time you checked the back end of your bike, in particular your suspension hardware bolts, your pivots, the shock bolts that hold it in place, the mounting bolts? Yeah, probably not often enough, okay? So, of course, we're all gonna do a safety check here and there, run an Allen key over the bike and check things. But actually, as you'd imagine, some things come loose without realizing. So it's a really good idea. It's moving parts after all. Now, some of this stuff's gonna come loose because it hasn't been tightened sufficiently in the first place. Some of it's gonna come loose because perhaps it didn't have thread lock on there. And some will just naturally vibrate, use, uh, vibrate loose due to the way that you ride the bike. If you're riding really rough terrain, some bolts are more susceptible to backing out than others. Uh, so just generally take a bit of care and look around your bike. I know that I don't look at my bike every ride. Okay, so every now and then I've looked at a bolt and realized that it's actually not completely tight. So alarm bells should be ringing here for everyone. Now it's a really good idea to do this because when I was at Bike Park Wales recently, firstly, I found this on the trail um, along with part the other end of the axle. So someone had lost this whilst riding, which is frankly terrifying. And if that is yours, it's a RockShox Maxwell a quick release skewer. Tell me, I'll send it back to you. And also this picture on screen here, uh, I actually, after this picture, I forgot to take these with me. I was gonna hand them into the trail team, but we found all this suspension hardware on the same trail. This is on Vicious Valley. Now I'm not gonna be able to get there for a while. So uh, if you get there before me, these components are on the flattened off log that has been chopped down just before the road gap on the Vicious Valley Red Trail. Uh, like I said, I found this hardware on the trail. So someone, or well, three people or four people, I forget how many parts there, had a pretty bad day there. So don't let this be you. Check your suspension components. Check all those nuts and bolts on the back of your bike. It's a safety check after all. 
And also, you want to safeguard yourself against expensive, uh, expensive repairs. Check the bushes on your shock. So uh, check the bolts are tight. Firstly, and if, they, if they're a bit loose, treat them to a bit of thread lock and get that on there. Uh, torque settings are always very helpful. All suspension hardware tends to have torque settings on them, and if not, the manufacturer will provide them, so definitely check that. But if your suspension bushings are loose, this can actually affect the shock. If the shock's able to move, it can twist, it can bind. Things can happen on the inside of the shock that are not supposed to happen, so that will equate to an expensive repair. So do yourself a favor, check the back end of your mountain bike. Now I've lost track of the amount of times I've seen people wrestling to get one of their quick release axles either out the back end or out of their forks. Now, after a while, these things can get pretty gunked up and I'll always see people just uh, putting them on the floor where they get mud and muck on them and then trying to slide them back in, sometimes nearly hammering them in to get them into place. Now these axles should slide into place really easily. Now, if yours is like this, do yourself a favor, remove it from the bike, clean it make sure it's working some of these axles have got moving parts on them like the cam treat it to a bit of lubricant yeah treat it like a moving part that it actually is clean the inside of the hub if you can get access to it run a, uh, a spoke through it with a bit of rag on it just to clean out the inside there and then put a small amount of grease just a tiny bit you don't need to like lather the thing up with the stuff and slide it back through it should be easy to go in whilst you're at it check the threads are clear on both your fork and the frame at the back end and make sure that the dropouts are nice and secure on there because any movement here will lead to creaking. Now, if your bike doesn't have a bolt through back end on there, this leads me to something else. Have you ever had a strange creaking occurring at the back end and you couldn't figure out what it was? Or perhaps your gears were very slightly out in just a number of gears and you couldn't figure it out? Well, the likelihood is you've got some kind of bolt on dropout, something like, bad example, something like this one here. Now, if the dropout bolts onto the frame and the skewer bolts into it, for example, you'll quite often have two or three millimeter bolts that hold these in place. If these are loose, this moves just a fraction. That can creak really badly. And also, send your gears out. So check those because it's quite possible they'll be loose or maybe one of them will be missing. Uh, as necessary, replace them, use thread lock on them. That will cure the problem. And if you've still got a creaking problem, perhaps use a bit of carbon gripper where this sits against the frame because if it is going to continue to move, at least that can minimize how much that's going to affect things. But so yeah, look after your skewers. Make sure that they're working and functioning correctly. Now, spokes and wheels are something that people choose to ignore sometimes because of the fact that it can be quite complicated. But if you've got a spoke that's come loose, it is definitely something you need to address, whether you go straight to the bike shop or you nip it up yourself. Now this is actually quite easy to do, you just don't want to get carried away if you're not sure about things. So have you heard your spokes creaking for example, or you heard any rattling? There's a good chance that something might be loose there. Now if you work your way around the wheel, just feeling, you can generally feel if there's something a lot looser than the other ones. If that's the case, then you want to nip it up. When I say nip it up, I mean very slowly take up that tension until you can feel it just being tense. And then using quarter of a turn at a time, just try and balance it with the spokes around it. Now you need to pay attention to what you're doing here because if you add too much tension on, you can really mess things up with your wheel. So this is why we say, if you're unsure when it comes to spokes and wheels, definitely don't do more than that. Get down to your local bike shop. But being able to nip it up is a skill that is worth practicing because sooner or later it's gonna happen out on the trail and of course you're gonna to have to get off that trail. Now you might also find that on some designs of wheels, like this one where the spoke intersection actually cross over, you hear that? They actually rub together sometimes. Now this is a super light wheel and in certain situations, um, I've had the spokes actually creaking against each other, uh, perhaps when it's been really filthy and it's dry, dusty, stuff like that. So you can stop this quite easily with a little bit of candle wax just at the junction there or a bit of dry lube. Of course, I should need to spell this out. If you're putting lube anywhere near with your disc rotors, you could be asking for trouble. So I would advise not doing this with the disc rotor on. And if you're gonna do it, just take a bit of care. A dry lube is the one to use because it actually evaporates. You only put a tiny little drop there on that connection 
and it will stop them creaking. Uh, that's something I've suffered from many wheels over the years, you know, for no particular reason. Some wheels just flex a bit more. You do need flex in wheels for them to handle well. But definitely have a little feel of your spokes, especially if you've had one of those really hard rides and you felt the rim bottom out really hard a few times. It's quite likely you might have a bit of a buckle, a bit of, bit of damage to the rim. So whilst you're at it, just inspect the whole thing there and just take a bit of care. Because of the fact your wheels work on tension, if one is completely out, the rest are gonna start going out. So it's important to keep things well balanced. Okay, and the last one I wanna talk about is the actual quick release levers on your bike. Now I see people with these in the wrong position all the time, including people I ride with, and actually I've seen it on some people I work with as well. But the point is, it's a safety item. So please double check yours. And it's really easy for it to not be in the right position. Maybe you've just slung your wheel on just to, I don't know, take your bike out to the car before putting it back uh, on the roof rack or something, and you've not double checked it. So definitely check them. Especially after, you know, I found this lever at the side of a trail. Someone was missing that when they were riding. Can you imagine the horror of that? Right, so there's two major systems on the market the RockShox Maxxel and the QR15, which you see on Fox forks quite often. Now, the difference between these, um, I'll go into, right? So the Maxxel system, when it's tight, the lever should be facing backwards or to like a nine o'clock position if you're looking at the bike. Now, if yours is in this position and it's not tight, it's a bit loose, you need to make an adjustment. Or if it's in the wrong position and it's tight, you wanna undo it from the bike, remove the axle, and then you can make an adjustment on the actual head itself. So it's got these markings here, and if you actually push, push the head in, you can rotate it so it will be in a different position. Might take you a few goes to get it right, but make sure when you tighten the axle, it's got a nice firm action. You might need to use a bit of your hand, but you shouldn't be like really getting white knuckles trying to push this thing on. It's just a cam operation. It should be firm, but easy to close, okay? And it shouldn't feel like it's too loose. It's a safety item, so do yourself a favor, and check it. And also, it just looks pro when it's in the right position. If it's in the wrong position, not only is it dangerous, it doesn't look very cool, does it? And I hear some of you might be asking, why is it dangerous? If that lever was facing forwards and it was loose and you caught it on some undergrowth, it can come loose and wrap, wrestle its way out of the bike. <laughs> you do not want that to happen, believe me. That would be a very expensive dentist bill. And with the Fox system, it's very slightly different. So the theory is the same. It's a cam lever. Again, it should be nice and firm, but not like a hard, hard resistance to close it. And again, it shouldn't be too easy. If you're flipping it like that, it's not quite right. You don't make the adjustment on the axle though, you make the adjustment on the captive nut, which is actually the cool thing about this system. Now Fox say that the lever should be uh, nearly vertical. It should be running in line with your fork roughly and the edge of the lever should be between one and 20 millimeters away from the fork itself. Now, if yours is in a different position and it's tight, then you need to make an adjustment. So the best way to do this is to undo it, back it off four turns or so, uh, depending on where it is in the cycle. And then if you look on the other side, you'll see you've got a little Allen key here, uh, an Allen bolt even, that's holding a little plate. You need to loosen that, but don't remove it, and then push the axle. Uh, from the actual skewer side and you'll find that captive nut will slide out of position and you can see you can put it in a number of indexed positions to actually provide it with the right position so it might take you a few goes to get this just right but once you've made that adjustment you won't have to do it again okay so do yourself a favor get that sorted and it means naturally every time you put it onto your bike it will be just about right now please definitely take care with this sort of stuff it is safety related and i guess a lot of these things kind of do come down to common sense checking your bike before you ride it now i know i'm guilty of a bunch of these things including having levers in the wrong place in the past but definitely make sure you check them now remember, a well dialed in bike is not only fun to ride, but it's safe. Come on, do yourselves a favor, check those bolts. Don't get yourself a horrible dentist bill or a nasty expensive shock bill from something broken because you could have tightened the bolt. Do yourself a favor and check some of these things uh, more often than you think you should. Now, if there's any things that I've missed out in this video, let us know in the comments. If there's anything you'd like me to make, let us know in those comments as well. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. See you later.